You're here because you want an effective core workout that you can do anywhere. So welcome to your 20-minute core abs workout guide. Today we're all about strengthening that midsection. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for more fitness content. A strong core is the foundation of all body movements and will help you get there with a series of exercises. Ready to feel the burn and get those abs working? Let's dive right in. First up, we have weighted crunches. This exercise is a great way to add resistance to your core workout. The extra weight forces your abs to work harder, building more strength and endurance over time. Let's break down how to do it correctly. Start by lying on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Hold a weight plate or dumbbell on your chest. Now, contract your abs to lift your upper body towards your knees. Exhale as you lift, keeping your lower back pressed to the floor. Take care to lift from your chest, not your head or neck. A common mistake is to pull your neck forward, which can lead to strain and injury. Instead, imagine a tennis ball is tucked under your chin to maintain proper form. As you reach the top of the movement, pause for a moment, really squeezing those abs. This is where the magic happens, folks. Then slowly lower yourself back down, inhaling as you do so, and there you have it. That's one rep of a weighted crunch. Now I want you to aim for three sets of these. If you're a beginner, seven reps per set is a good starting point. If you're more advanced, aim for up to 15 reps. Remember, the goal isn't to knock out these reps as fast as you can. This is a controlled movement. The slower you go, the more your abs have to work. Don't be discouraged if you can't do many reps to start. It's not about how many you can do, it's about doing them right. Over time, as your strength increases, so too will your reps. A quick note on choosing your weight. Pick a weight that's challenging but manageable. If you're struggling to complete your reps or if your form is suffering, go lighter. On the other hand, if you're breezing through your sets, don't be afraid to up the weight. Remember, it's not about speed, but focus on form for maximum results. The weighted crunch is all about quality over quantity. So take your time, focus on your form, and let's get those abs working. Now we move on to leg raises. This exercise is perfect for targeting the lower abs. To correctly perform leg raises, start by lying flat on your back. Plant your hands, palms down on the floor beside you. Press your lower back into the floor and pull your navel towards your spine to engage your core. This is your starting position. Inhale as you lift your legs off the floor, keeping them straight. Exhale as you raise your legs to just above 90 degrees or as far as comfortable. Remember, you don't want to strain your back. Inhale again as you begin to lower your legs back down, but don't let them touch the floor. You want to keep a slight hover to maintain tension in your abs. Repeat these steps for 12 to 15 reps, depending on your fitness level. Aim for three sets. Now let's talk about common mistakes. The first is arching your lower back off the floor. This can lead to back pain and reduces the effectiveness of the exercise. Always keep your lower back pressed into the floor. The second common mistake is bending the knees. Keep your legs as straight as possible to really engage your lower abs. Breathing is key when performing leg raises. It helps maintain proper form and keeps your core engaged. Remember to inhale as you lift and lower your legs and exhale as you raise them. And finally, control is crucial. Avoid swinging your legs or using momentum to lift them. Instead, use your abs to control your movements. This will ensure you're really working your core and not just going through the motions. Keep in mind that it's okay if you can't raise your legs all the way at first. With time and practice, your flexibility and strength will improve. And remember, it's not about how many reps you can do, but about doing each rep correctly. Keep your movements controlled and your core engaged throughout. You've got this. Now let's raise those legs and sculpt those abs. Scene script. Next, we're tackling flutter kicks. This exercise will get your heart rate up while working your abs. Now let's dive into the mechanics of this exercise. Begin by lying flat on your back on a mat. Extend your legs fully and place your hands palms down under your glutes. This position will help to support your lower back and maintain correct form throughout the exercise. Now lift both legs off the ground about six inches. This is your starting position. From here, you're going to flutter your legs up and down one at a time. Think of yourself as a graceful swimmer. Your legs are your fins and you're kicking through the water. This movement, quick and controlled, is what we call a flutter kick. As for your breathing, it's crucial to maintain a steady rhythm. Inhale as you lower one leg and exhale as you lift. This will not only help you keep tempo, but it will also engage your core even more. There are a few common mistakes to avoid when performing flutter kicks. The first is lifting your lower back off the ground. 
This not only reduces the effectiveness of the exercise, but it can also lead to strain or injury. That's why it's vital to keep your lower back flat on the mat throughout the motion. Another common mistake is kicking too high or too low. Your kicks should be small, swift, and controlled, not wild and erratic. Remember, this isn't just about moving your legs, it's about engaging your core. As for the rep count, we suggest starting with 3 sets of 8 to 12 reps. However, feel free to adjust depending on your fitness level. The key is to challenge yourself, but not to the point of discomfort or pain. Lastly, remember to take it slow and steady. It's not about how fast you can do the kicks, but rather how well you can execute them, quality over quantity, always. Remember to keep your lower back flat on the ground to avoid any strain. Finally, we're finishing strong with the plank. This is a full body exercise that really fires up your core. It's a move that requires no equipment, just your body weight and a little determination. So, let's get into it. Start by getting into a push-up position on the floor. Now bend your elbows 90 degrees and rest your weight on your forearms. Your elbows should be directly beneath your shoulders, and your body should form a straight line from your head to your feet. This is the starting position. Now let's talk form. It's crucial to maintain a straight line from your head to your heels. This means your hips should not be sagging or raised high. Imagine you're a plank of wood and you're straight as an arrow. Flex your abdominals and squeeze your glutes. These are the two major muscle groups you're working during this exercise. Breathing is also essential during this move. You want to maintain a steady and relaxed breathing pattern. That means inhaling and exhaling smoothly in a way that feels natural to you. Try not to hold your breath as this can create unnecessary tension in your body. Common mistakes to avoid include letting your lower back sag. This puts unnecessary pressure on your spine and reduces the effectiveness of the exercise. Instead, aim to keep your torso as rigid as possible and contract your abs the entire time. You'll feel this in your midsection and your glutes. Another mistake is lifting your hips too high. This takes the tension off your abs and puts it on your legs and shoulders instead. Remember, the plank is primarily a core move, so you want to focus on those muscles. Now I want you to try and hold your plank for as long as you can. Your goal should be to do two sets for as long as you can hold each one. It's not about how long you can hold the plank, but about maintaining the correct form for as long as possible. Maintain a straight line from head to heels and remember to breathe. And there you have it, a 20 minute core abs workout that you can do from anywhere. We've powered through weighted crunches, leg raises, flutter kicks and planks. Three sets for most and two for the plank with reps varying based on the exercise. Consistency and proper form are key, so don't rush. Feel free to share your progress and ask any questions in the comments. Remember, your fitness journey is a marathon, not a sprint. So keep going, stay strong, and we'll see you in the next video.